Great. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge um, the the funders of of um, our study. Um, these uh, the two the top ones: Australian Association of Musculoskeletal Medicine, and then there's the Australasian Faculty of Musculoskeletal Medicine. And then the next foundation is in Wisconsin. I've just been to their conference to present this. Uh, Echometrics is an ultrasound firm, and then there's my school where I work at Griffith University, at the Gold Coast in uh, in uh, Queensland, Australia. Um, first of all, I'd like to dispel a few myths about Australia that we don't have kangaroos running around with boxing gloves on, the boxing kangaroo, um, but you will see lots of kangaroos. And um, for better or for worse, we don't have, have uh, um, Steve Irwin still around. He unfortunately um, passed away. Well, not, not, at the, um, not because of, of a crocodile, but um, uh, from a stingray um, that he was uh, chasing. And we don't all run around saying crikey, crikey, so all the time. But what we do have is we do have nice beaches, and um, this actually is is one an artificial beach that's produced in the centre of my city, Brisbane, um, where you can sit and lie on the beach in your bikini or togs, as we call them, bathers, and um, and look at this look at this, the city. So um, please come and visit one day if you can handle the trip. I have no interests, no conflict of interest to declare. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit, of, a little bit about tennis elbow, the, um, which actually is only seems to be triggered by tennis in a, in a minority, maybe 10, 20 percent of of patients, um, and could just as well be, um, you know, from this activity. No one really knows the the um, the, the cause of it, or it perhaps is more closely related to manual work um, as well, so using swinging hammers, etc. So, um, but essentially, it's a tend, it's a, a believed to be a tendinopathy or an enthesopathy um, of the attachment of the extensor tendons um, of the wrist. So, particularly extensor carpi radialis brevis. Um. Now, how many of you know what prolotherapy is? Can you put up your hands. Oh wow, one. Okay, <laughs> and most people have never heard of it. But um, to start with, this, the theoretical basis of prolotherapy is that uh, we sprain the ligaments, we sprain antheses, and uh, or where tendons insert into into bone. That's what I mean by an anthesis. They fail to heal, and that leads to uh, some instability or a biomechanical problem or dysfunction, and that leads to pain and and prolonged disability. So that's the theory. I don't, I'm not saying there's great proof of this, but that's the theory. And the rationale then for treatment becomes that you inject um, these ligaments or antheses with a proliferant solution, which is uh, designed to proliferate or to stimulate growth uh, via process of inflammation and release of tissue growth factors. And then that leads to deposition of strengthening collagen and often it's combined with some exercises and that leads to decreased pain and disability. So that's the theory of it. Um, I've done three big s randomized controlled trials on it. My PhD was on low, its use in low back pain, and then did uh, Achilles tendinopathy, and then now tennis elbow. So, but I thought, actually my, my, my personal opinion, having used it in tennis elbow, was that it really wasn't very effective. And then I saw the study which came out of Utah here, um, a small study of only 20 20 patients, um, 10 in each group, uh, receiving prolotherapy for tennis elbow and compared with uh, saline injections. So this is from doc Dr. Michael Scarpone. This is, a, this is the results of a systematic review of injections for um, the management of uh, tendinopathy in the elbow. And one of the most positive studies actually is this prolotherapy study here. This is no effect here. And and um, this is uh, um, an effect which is significant. It's on the side of the of the dotted line here. Sorry, no effect is one. So um, it was one of the most positive studies. The other one was actually sodium hyaluronate injections, which no nobody knows about either. So um, and 
And the long term, interestingly, it doesn't show it on here, but steroid injections are actually counterproductive and they give you a high relapse rate. And so that's one reason when we were designing the study we decided not to use steroid as a control. Even though everyone uses you know, it's commonly used, gives good short short term results, gives bad long term results. We did a little pilot study, um, or they did in here in Wisconsin, um, which compared weight the wait list uh, for tennis elbow. This is the called the PRT score, which is the, the patient rated tennis elbow evaluation score, uh, which is a validated um, questionnaire uh, looking at pain and, and function. Uh, and then uh, dextrose is the treatment, th is this prolotherapy, which is glucose or dextrose, part of the um, concentrated solution I talked about before. And, and this one, Morrowate, is a, a sort of extra powerful solution. It's cod liver oil, which is added to the dextrose solution. Dex and both of them have local anaesthetic, lidocaine, in them. And um, uh, the there were significant differences um, after four weeks and eight weeks and 16 weeks compared with um, the wait list controls. Not massive ones, but some, some differences there. So why did we do the study? So th there it looked like there were some promising um, results, um, particularly with the addition of the Morrowate, the, the uh, s cod liver oil to the solution needs testing in a more definitive test uh, setting and compared with uh, need to compare it with the um, physiotherapy which is what we regard in Australia as the standard of care we have a special type of physiotherapy and uh, apropos of what I was talking about before I think it's important to study the addition of treatments to putting two treatments together because that's commonly done and to look at the cost effectiveness and patient acceptability of, of these treatments so we set up a what's called a pragmatic study um, with no placebo control. There's uh, three active groups. The first is prolotherapy injections. Second was um, prolotherapy injections combined with the physiotherapy regime, and the third was the physio alone. So the inclusion criteria: um, people had to have tennis elbow for more than six weeks. They had to have a, a, a of what would regard as sort of a moderate severity, um, more than 20 points. 100 is um, is very severe. Zero is is, uh, is is you know no problem in this scale. We excluded people with upper limb conditions not due to tennis elbow and did some pretty pretty um, extensive assessment to ensure that was the case. Uh, people had treatment within the last six months, pregnancy and medical conditions that contraindicated treatment. So what do you do in prolotherapy? Um, I'd ask um, Carrie to shut his eyes here because we've got some needles needles here and um, <laughs> but um, you um, basically you find the tender points around the elbow that are related to tennis elbow and um, you put a bleb of local anesthetic in the skin and then you go through that with your needle the solution which is 15 percent dextrose and 0.4 uh, percent lidocaine and inject it into the tender point so this is um, the the Super supracondylar ridge and uh, the anterior facet of that which has an extensive carpi radialis longus on it, extensive carpi radialis brevis attaches here. This is the point that is always tender in tennis elbow and that's the one that's injected virtually all the time. And then um, variably you get tenderness over the annular ligament here and a little bit further down uh, muscular tenderness junction. So they're the, they're the um, four points that I would commonly do if there was only th two tender points, we'd only inject two points. So it's directed very much by tenderness. You don't need fancy ultrasounds. It's a fairly cheap treatment, but uh, it's it's also you know somewhat painful. Now the physio exercise program um, <laughs> includes what's called a Mulligan, who's a physio from New Zealand, uh, a mobilisation with movement to achieve a pain-free state for performance of the program of concentric and eccentric exercises. So uh, this is just ju whoops. Um, uh, just some pictures of what might happen here. Physio is, uh, is mobilising the elbow um, and uh, in various ways and small mobilisation as well. The patient's then doing some, this is the patient doing it themselves at home, they're mobilising their own elbow. 
with the aim of being able to do exercises, concentric and eccentric exercises, to uh, in a pain-free state. So if this is done properly, the, the patient shouldn't have pain when they do things which normally hurt with tennis elbow, like gripping um, and, uh, and extension of the, of the wrist. So the, the best test for tennis elbow is just to push up against the third finger. It's, if I only had one test, that's the one I'd do. So that's the, that's the sort of quick, uh, quick summary of the treatment. So our study involved screening um, people out to s check they had tennis elbow, and uh, we needed 100, we powered, powered it to uh, 120 patients to, to look at some um, minim minimum clinically important difference on the PRTE of 13, and divided them, randomised them, um, computer, uh, a sort of distant randomization um, uh, computer randomised um, clinical trial service that um, that determined which group they went in. Um, so 40 per group, uh, prolotherapy injections monthly. They're done on a f monthly basis, so it takes three months to get four treatments. The physio is on a weekly basis traditionally, and so it takes a month to in a, under a month to have your four treatments, and and then the mixture of the two together, which. Talk we worked out so worked it out so most of the physio was up front and the injections lasted for three months. Now the originally we were going to have um, optional addition of the sodium morrowate, which is the cod liver oil, to the solution if they didn't improve, um, because we didn't want it because it's more inflammatory, it causes more more discomfort afterwards. And um, but this became unavailable early in the study. Uh, it became impossible to get it except some place in in India. And, and no offence, but there was no quality control on this. I wasn't going to be injecting this stuff that was not really of, of a rigorous sort of um, uh, safety. And so we had to abandon that, that part of the treatment, so that option in treatment. Outcomes were the ones shown in red are the ones I'm going to present today because there's a lot of outcomes. Um, and uh, the PRTEE score and a global impression of change score. Um, and uh, I, I think I will also show a little bit about the pain, the worst pain severity, sorry, it's not shown there. And Uroqual is um, the quality of life measure. Um, we did some objective testing on site at 6, 12, and 26, and 52 weeks after the treatment started. And uh, pain strip, pain free grip, strength, and Newton's. Ultrasound, which I won't, we haven't analyzed yet. Um, and then pressure pain threshold, um, where you press on the on the elbow with a pressure machine and and get them to tell you when it becomes um, when it becomes painful. So <coughs> it took us um, twenty months to recruit patients over tw thousand telephone screens uh, to get our enrolments. Most people. Most people uh, who came in and got assessed um, were enrolled, and um, we got about roughly 90% follow-up at each of these, which means we can be fairly confident about the results. Um, that sort of meets the meets the standard of of uh, very good follow-up. Um, so, just to uh, talk about the randomization process, was it effective in randomizing people into groups? Well, the um, in terms of age, and I won't go through all the details, but in age and gender, there was no difference between groups. In terms of um, um, frequency and the, whether it was a recurrence or not, whether it was um, they were getting better or worse or the same at the same going along the same at uh, the time of entry, there was no difference. But there was a bit of difference between just coincidentally about the sides. So in the the group um, that got the combined treatment. It was more evenly balanced in terms of left to right. You can see that that this is a predominantly right-sided condition in the other groups, because um, most people are right-handed, and uh, and um, they seem to be more likely to get it. But whether that's of any significance, I don't know. We can test for that later. So here's the crux. Here, here's the final, the sort of the key key slide, I suppose. Um, looking at their response to their uh, to their um, treatment over time. So this is 12 months uh, up here, and you can see the average um, severity was uh, between 30 and 35. Um, as I said, the, they had to have at least 20 to get into the study on this PRTE score. 
Now the green line is the physio alone, the red line is the prolotherapy alone and the blue line is the combination of the two. And um, essentially the, uh, there's a significant difference in, um, at 6 and 12 weeks um, between the, the physio um, therapy group and the prolotherapy group. The, you know, the physio groups seem to get better faster, uh, to improve faster. And to look at that in terms of difference in, in change scores between those two groups, um, you, uh, th this is looking, so this is looking at the difference between the two, so um, at this point, six weeks, the, the physio group was 10 points ahead of, in their reductions, ahead, ahead of um, the prolotherapy group and a significant margin. And the same at, um, at 12 weeks. But once we got to six months there was and 12 months, there's no significant difference between the groups. So they kind of all ended up the same. Yeah. Um, the worst pain by group, similar picture, that the, uh, at six and 12 weeks, the, pro the physio group, the green group, you can see had significantly better drops in their, their uh, scores than the prolotherapy group and the prolo and physio group was no different to the prolo th to the physio alone. Pain pressure threshold, pressure pain threshold, sorry. The affected to unaffected by group. So the um, uh, this is done by a ratio between the, the the pain pressure the threshold on the affected side, which is more sensitive and, and they say ouch earlier, it's starting to hurt. Uh, compared with the unaffected side, so um, uh, they start off with a ratio less than, much less than one, and they end up at the end when they're better. The ratio is one, so that equally is painful, equal threshold on each side. Um, here, the um, increases for physiotherapy were significantly greater than for prolotherapy at the 12-week mark. At this point here, okay. And um, pain-free grip when they grip onto uh, a algo uh, algometer. Um, it's once again the ratio from the unaffected to unaffected side is less than one for the same reason. It's painful. Uh, there was um, no significant differences between groups over time. They, at the end of the day, they ended up around about one. So they're all back to, back to equally, equally um, strong and pain-free grip on each side. Global impression of change cause. Um, so we asked them whether they're worse, which gives you a score of one, um, but to through to completely better, which is a score of six here, uh, at, at various intervals after the after initiation of treatment. And um, the uh, there's a sort of bit of an anomaly here in that the improvements of prolotherapy is significantly greater than for prolotherapy and physiotherapy at this point here it's at uh, 26 weeks so but no no differences elsewhere just looking at it it looks i mean just uh, for non-significant change here it looks like the these two groups are getting better a little bit faster not significantly so the euroqual which is the quality of life measure um generally i find these measures quality of life measures not as sensitive uh, to change in these studies as, as the things i've shown you already and um, there was no significant differences between groups over time. Um, 100 is, the, is, is great quality of life um, and, and zero is very poor quality, okay. So now looking at the relapses, I mentioned before that the that corticosteroid uh, is, it has a greater relapse rate um, than, than um, no treatment. Uh, at all, so um, and that's one reason we don't use it as a control uh, treatment anymore. It's great in the early stages. It's probably n detrimental in the in the long in the the uh, late stages of this condition. Um, now there's no significant differences here. The prolotherapy, which claims to be working on Im improving the uh, the healing in the area, um, had seemed to have a, a lower recurrence rate around the. 11, 12 to 14, 15 percent mark than, than the other two variations which were a bit higher but no significant differences here. So, so last time I presented this they said well what happens if you do nothing? 
and wait and see approach. So I came equipped with with um, a little bit of information here. It's a bit hard to find. Um, this is a, just a natural history of um, people of all elbow complaints in the primary care setting, and uh, what happens over 12 months. So it's not specific to tennis elbow, but tennis elbow is the commonest presentation of elbow pain in general practice. Um, and, and here you can see re really poor sort of responses to, that, to getting um, completely better. Uh, at six months, only 20% are saying that they're better, and 12 months, only 30%. But this is not just tennis elbow. Um, but more directly comparing with uh, our study um, is the only, only comparable data I could find was um, with the pain-free grip uh, measure from a previous study done by one of our investigators, Leanne Bissett, Bissett. and uh, this shows a slower, in the wait and see group that they followed for 12 months, that there was a slower um, response to the pain-free grip uh, imbalance um, in the wait and see group, which is shown in black here. You know, there's pr problems in comparing across studies, as you know. This is that th they say it's a bit of a no-no, but I think this gives you some idea. Um, uh, it's better than no idea um, as to the difference between waiting and seeing and doing active treatment. <coughs> and then in the same study um, that Dr. Bissett did, uh, the re the what recurrence rate, sorry, the complete um, uh, patients who said they were completely better at 12 months. Um, with the wait and see group about 90%, which is very similar to all of the treatments that we've had here. So I suppose you can tell your patients with tennis elbow that if we do nothing, you, you know, 12 months time, there's a high chance you're going to get better. But 12 months is a long time. I want to know as a patient, can you get me, me better faster than 12 months, or even be be faster than six months? And that's what the treatment's all about. So we've got a number of analyses to do when I get home and, um, and to get this published and so they're all listed there. In summary then, that the um, pain and function outcomes showed improvements uh, over time for all treatments, that physiotherapy was superior to prolotherapy alone at uh, 6 and 12 weeks. There was no additional benefit by putting the two treatments together, which is different to the study I did on Achilles where putting the two treatments together was added some benefit. Yeah. And uh, the global impression of change, um, improvements over time for all treatments, good results at the end uh, and, and at six months, but no difference um, most of the time. There was this anomaly of pr prolotherapy superior to prolotherapy in physio at 26 weeks. Uh, at the 12-month 12, 12 mark, the least relapses occurred in the prolotherapy group, but it wasn't significantly so. So these studies take a long time to do and you feel a bit like this when you get to the end of them, but um, we have to press on and get this published. The, um, as I say, physio seems to be superior to prolotherapy at six to 12 months, six and 12 weeks. Adding the prolotherapy to the physio doesn't uh, improve results. Uh, and the, the, pro the good news is prognosis is good at six months. You can even tell your patients that most of them would better be better at six months as well. So thank you very much. That's it.